Appreciate all of you that are here tonight. God bless you. And praise God. Yeah, we were spared the dangerous weather for all of this. What do we got for announcements? Other than Friday, what do we got? mind of the Lord. Amen. We'll come to be part of it. Uh, Mike, do you have anything you want to say about it? Or? We're, we're pressing in. Uh, I don't know if the time is going to go with the intervention or not, but um, we need to come together. There's, there's a lot of things going on that, in the unseen realm that uh, need to be broken. And I know we can do it in part, but we don't want to do it in part. We want to do it as a whole body. We want to come together. Fifteen minutes, an hour, or two hours, whatever. And we'll uh, it'll be appreciated. There is, there is, you know, there is power in unity. And uh, even the Lord said, if where two would agree, or you know, two agree for a thousand of life, you know, ten thousand, and so forth. So you can imagine what can happen if we get 15, 20, 30 people together. Everybody believing for a move of God. Yes. Amen. And we'll see some results. Praise God. Okay. Financial Peace, uh, Roberto is going to be doing a seminar of uh, nine weeks, right, Roberto? Yes. And uh, I'll just let you, what do you? Yeah, so I have an outline. Um, so we're going to start doing this uh, series. I'm going to try and do it twice a year in the spring and the fall. Uh, to participate, you one have to register, and two, you have to get the materials. They come in a box by the door. There is a workbook in here, case book. Praise the Lord. Well, uh, amen. I think it would be a good investment for anybody. Money talks and then you know the rest of that story. <laughs> yeah, it does. And uh, God wants to provide. I mean, he does. And, and, and we need to know how to best utilize that uh, which he does provide. So I think it's a good idea. Roberto's, you know, really... Uh, pleased with their results, with how they've applied this to their lives and how it's affected them. So I'm, I'm just thinking it's a, a good thing. Yeah. Amen. We all need uh, a little discipline when it comes to finances. Not me so much, but others <laughs> who I know have <laughs> issues. Amen. Yeah. Okay, financial peace. Everybody would like to have some. Amen. All right, vision. Without a vision, my people perish. Praise Amen. the Lord. And uh, we need to be focused on the Lord and just keep our eyes and ears, spiritually speaking, open to what the Lord is directing.
directing us and leading us and guiding us. Praise the Lord. Anything else? Okay. Praise the Lord. Any prayer requests? Man, I want to get with you guys. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. That's right. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. You know, you can't, this is one of the things we've been talking about for quite a while, but you can't wait till the crisis comes to start applying the word of God and think that it's going to be effective. It will be effective, but it doesn't necessarily happen overnight. And your faith isn't where it ought to be. You know, so it, it creates issues that then cause us to question, you know, okay, well, maybe God doesn't want to help me, or then that's just bogus. That's just not the truth. But a lot of times, you know, we're, we're, we live in two realms. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. Mm -hmm. And there's a constant conflict between these two realities. Because the one is all about the senses and what you can see, taste, touch, hear, smell, feel. And the other is about bringing the kingdom into this realm to dominate those natural things. Yes. And uh, it's just hard when you're right up against the storm and you haven't been practicing staying focused on the word of God, declaring the word of God, keeping your, uh, your mind and heart fixed on that reality. Uh, that's what changes this one. This one doesn't change. If, if, if it would change just because of us wanting it changed or hard work, it would be changed by now. There's enough people that have wanted it to change and wanted different things than what they're right. experiencing, but praise the Lord. Amen. This works. Yes. And can't judge and experience and say, okay, well then I guess it doesn't work anymore. No, there's there's something else going on because the word of God is true. Right. I had a phone call uh, Monday, uh, late Monday, young guy that was in the hospital in a coma. He'd been in there for a week, but I didn't know anything about it. It was just apparently just put on Facebook Monday. And uh, he is my uh, oldest daughter's ex-husband. I've known him since he was a kid, since they were in school. So I went down. And <clears throat> I, I did a funeral for his mother last, I don't know, maybe it was late fall or early spring. And uh, met his wife now and, and their kids and stepkids and so forth but anyway I went down he's in a coma I went in and <clears throat> prayed for him they said he might be able to hear you so you know I just talked to him and uh, told him if you can believe that you don't have to say anything you don't it doesn't have to be verbal but if you can hear me and you know what I'm saying you can agree with me and so I just declared healing over him and so on and so forth and I went out and talked to his wife who I would like, I'm going through this, but I'd like you to pray for her. Her name is Echo. And pray for her and their family. That's all the family he has now. So, uh, But nevertheless, she, they're not, ch they weren't church-going people. They were believers. Both of them are believers, but they, they just don't go to church like a lot of people. So she's in there, and that's what she's been doing for the last week, is speaking to him. You're healed. Confess it. Believe it. Whatever. And she told me, she was honest with me, that you know when the doctors come and give the report, she said it kind of throws me off and you know, I just have to come back and keep doing it. My point is this, he passed away this morning. It's just really hard to move in that dimension when, you're, when you don't do it on a regular basis. And then you're faced with a major potential calamity. Fear is a powerful force. And it's just hard to stand in faith when you have all this anxiety and, and you're getting a constant report from the doctors 
or maybe it's a banker, or maybe it's a lawyer, or you know, a spouse, or whoever it might be, that just keeps slapping you in the face with another reality. But so I'm just saying, um, it always disappoints me whenever these things happen, and not because you know I want another gold star for praying for somebody and seeing them healed, but so that people aren't suffering the way they're, they're suffering when they're not supposed to be. But this doesn't determine my faith. These are aberrations. The reality is, by his stripes we were healed. He became poor that we would prosper. Amen? Uh, he suffered rejection so that we could have relational growth and, and, and blessing. All of these things. He already paid the price. That's the finished work, and that has to be our focus. And that's what I talked about Sunday and have talked about for several years. But I'm just convinced that the, the idea of begging and pleading with God is long since past. That's an old covenant. We already know what he has provided for us. Now it's a question of us operating from that position and believing Amen for manifestation there. So, again, I would I would like you to uh, remember Echo Hausman and uh, and their family, and just that she is able to go through this situation with the peace of God, and uh, the things will come together, and uh, she'll be able to rest in the knowledge that Scott is with the Lord, and uh, though we can't bring him here, we can see him again in heaven. We don't grieve the way those who have no hope grieve, but it's a, I mean, it's a devastating thing to lose your spouse, and especially when you have kids and, and all of that as well, so I'd like us to remember him, just that God will give her a special touch and, and a blessing of peace and comfort throughout this entire situation. Yes, ma'am. Conversation, praise the Lord. All right, anything else? Anybody else? Alan. The angels are still working. Praise the Lord. Been here for a long time. For 
back in the 30s. Yeah. Right. When you were a portion of that procedure, imagine the dream of seeing a soldier that, like a bucket of water and pour out the spirit. It hit this building, and when he poured water out that fast, it kept the spirit, but it still rolled in his neighborhood. Right. His neighborhood is going to know yeah. that you're sharing the body yeah. and blood yeah. and blood. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep the faith that everything that you've ever seen through this building and this church and this body stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Praise God. Father, you've heard every need and of course you were aware of it before we brought it to you. You ask us to cast our cares upon you. And just give every situation and circumstance to you in faith. Lord, we know that your word says that if whatever we pray is according to your will and everything mentioned here tonight is according to your will. And if we know it's according to your will, then we know that you hear us. And if you hear us, then we know that we have our petition. So, Father, we just celebrate right now the victory in every one of these situations. Lord, we thank you that you're moving in each and every life that's here. For those that we've prayed for tonight, Lord, that the Holy Spirit is ministering as only you can. Lord, bringing your life, your reality to those who don't know you. And to those who are just beginning to know you, Lord, reveal yourself in mighty and powerful ways. Let them experience the love of God as they never have before. And let the peace that passes all understanding be theirs. Lord, we stand on the promises you've given us, Lord. We declare them to be our reality. And Lord, we know that you have a perfect plan, purpose, and will for each of our lives and for all of us collectively, Lord. And we put our confidence in that that you have a good future for us, a plan and a purpose. And for that, Lord, we are eternally grateful and give you all the thanks and the praise. And Lord, we thank you now. We're not going to wait until we see the manifestation. By faith, Lord, we celebrate the victory, the fulfillment of every promise that you've given in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Ron, would you do us the kindness of taking up the offering again? Amen, amen. Thanks, Ron, and God bless you as you give. Worship team can come, and let's just praise the Lord.
Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's praise him right now. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Praise God. We rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. God bless you. you. may be seated if you haven't already. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, worship team. As always, praise the Lord. The Lord is, hallelujah, inhabits the praises of his people. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. I was thinking that song just prior to this last one, when, I think a couple weeks ago or whatever it was, I don't remember we sang it. And it reminded me of uh, some of the things I was talking about that day. And one of those is that he said uh, he saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up. This is from uh, Isaiah chapter 6, by the way. And the angels cried one to another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Praise God. And we talked about how we expand that glory presence of the Lord. He goes on to say that, uh, then I said, woe is me for I'm undone because I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts, which is kind of the way we are, you know. He said the glory filled the temple. We are the temple of God. And yet we're saying, you know, but I'm this mess. I'm this unclean lips. I'm this uh, guy that's undone. And yet I've seen the Lord. And the next thing God says is, who will I send? Who will go for us? Amen. Then said, I hear my, send me. Praise the Lord. Yes. So I kind of want to talk about that tonight. It wasn't my intention for them to sing this, but I'm glad they did because it just <laughs> helps me deal with this kind of Shotgun message I've got, praise the Lord. Uh, you know, God just kind of goes the way God wants to go, and you just try to catch up, praise the Lord, and <laughs> stay, stay with him. So if I'm uh, erratic or whatever here, uh, or seemingly random, uh, I probably am, praise the Lord. But I want to start with Psalms chapter 8, and I want to read verses 1 through 8, Roberto. Psalms 8, uh, verses 1 through 8. And I'll, again, it's Wednesday night, so I'll try to move through this as quickly as possible without leaving out anything that the Lord has given me. So you all can get up in the morning and do whatever you do when you get up. O oh Lord, our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. How does he do it? How does he still the enemy and the avenger? What we say. Yeah. Whom will I send, right? When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and that word angels, and I'll get to it later, it's, it's a, 
a poor translation. The actual literal translation is Adonai, or I believe it is, or Elohim maybe, which is, means God, a little lower than God. Hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the sea. Praise the Lord. So the problem with a, a lot of Christians, if not most, is that they don't really know who they are. Praise the Lord. They've either forgotten or stopped believing what the Bible says or else they just didn't ever know it. Because the Bible says where we came from and who we are. The devil has been effective, you know, when it comes to keeping us blind and deep to the, to the reality of that truth. God created man a little lower than himself. I just mentioned angels is actually Hebrew word Elohim, which is God. So when he actually said that, and I suppose that kind of threw some translators a curve, but he said, he didn't say he made us a little lower than the angels. We are above the angels. Yes. Angels are messengers for us, yes. to us, and from us, amen? Yes. But he made us just a little bit lower than himself. It's the same word that's used in Genesis 1-1 where it said, in the beginning, God, Elohim, created the heaven and the earth. Mm -hmm. It's the very same word, amen? So God created us to be like him. And then he crowned us with glory and majesty. Yes. God created us to rule, and then he gave us power and authority to do it. Yes. I hope you're listening to me tonight. Yes. We, we really need to get yes. an uplift, amen, when it comes to our identity yes. and what we're capable of and what yes. God intended us to be yes. and to do yes. in this world, amen? Yes. That word glory that David used here in the psalm is the Hebrew word kabod, which means weighty and splendid. Amen? And majesty translates from a Hebrew word hadar, which is a synonym for glory and honor. Praise the Lord. So he, he uh, gave us his glory, this kabod, this weighty splendor, amen, and majesty, amen, which is the same glory and honor. So we got a double portion, hallelujah, of glory. Yes. And for God to give us glory, we had to be honored. Amen? Yes. Praise God. So look at this, Isaiah chapter 42, verses uh, 5 through 9. Isaiah 42, 5 through 9. Thus saith God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto the people upon it and spirit to them that walk therein. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, and I will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light, amen, to the Gentiles. Yes, to open the blind eyes, yes. to bring out, this is what he's telling us we're to do. Open the blind eyes, bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven yes, images. Yes. Yes. Behold, the former things are come to pass, yes. and new things do I declare before they spring forth. I tell you of them. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. He doesn't share his glory with another, but we've been made one with him. Yes. Somebody, yeah, say yes. praise the Lord again. That's the truth. Oh. Hallelujah. He's not giving it to somebody outside of him. He's sharing it with those who are one with him. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. All right, Matthew chapter 12, uh, verses 15 through 21. Matthew 12, 15 through 21. See, it's almost too much. In fact, it is too much for the natural mind. But that's why we have to repent of intellect sometimes and just start operating by the Spirit. Because that's who we are. Yes. I heard somebody say just the other day, and Sally and I were talking about it because it kind of even freaked me at first, but Jesus wasn't born 
perfect. That same, that's the same feeling I had when I heard it, praise the Lord. He's the second Adam, right? The first Adam was not born perfect. He was born innocent. The reason Jesus could not come through the line of Joseph is because he would have received Adam's nature. He would have gotten the bloodline of humanity. Would have made him guilty. Right? So he wasn't made perfect. He was made innocent to be the second Adam. And then he was perfected through obedience. You know, he grew in stature and in wisdom and knowledge with and favor with God and with man. All of these things is what he did. So we're born again, and when we're born again, we're born innocent. We're not born perfect when we're born again. We're born again innocent. The law is no longer used against us, so there's no way to measure good or bad or whatever. We're, we're just innocent again. Now the question is, are we going to be obedient? Now, we, if we look at that from a religious perspective, then we go, oh, boy, here we go back into the drudgery of trying to do this stuff. No, that's not what he's talking about. We are obedient to the work of Christ. That's what the Scripture tells us. He was already obedient. We look to his obedience. That's our obedience. As long as we stay focused on that, we are the same as obedient. Amen. We are walking in faith, in other words, in the finished work of Jesus. That's what we do. In order for us to be perfected. Now that doesn't mean we're not already going to heaven and righteous and all that. It just means that we can't do everything that God wants us to do unless we focus on that reality. The reason Jesus was able to do everything he did was because he saw himself as one with the Father. Praise the Lord. He was tempted to not believe that. I mean, there were challenges against his, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit working through him, being filled with the fullness of God, because he was still flesh, just like us. Amen? So it says, but when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all and charged them that they should not make him known, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by uh, Isaiah the prophet, saying, praise the Lord, behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. This is a fulfillment of Isaiah. Amen. What we just read a moment ago. A bruised reed shall he not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. And in his name shall the Gentiles trust. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Because if you go back to Isaiah 42 and 1, it talks about sending his servant, the righteous servant. Amen. Which is is Jesus. So that's being fulfilled here in Matthew chapter 12, verses 15, 21. We are in Christ. When he got sent, we got sent. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are one with Christ. Am I right about that? Yes. Praise the Lord. All right. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. You see, if you don't if you don't focus on this, then when you read the scripture, it's always about somebody else. You know, it's always about somebody that's more spiritual. It's always about somebody that's more in tune. It's always about somebody that, you know, is better, you know, knows more, has more, all that. It's not the truth. That We've got to see ourselves here, or we're never going to rise to the place that God has called us to. Amen. So now, unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Loud, but say praise the Lord to that. Unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to what? The power that works in us. Yes. Praise the Lord. Not some outside force. It's what's in us. Amen. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Praise the Lord. So look, just think about this. The unmeasurable power of God is at work here, and it's at work here in us. In us, praise the Lord. God's glory. Unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ. God's glory, God's power. Where? In the church. In us. Yes. Praise God. The glory, hallelujah. God's power and glory resides in each of us. If we know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. His glory still fills the temple. Amen? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 
verses 6 through 10. Set me up here for a, a real sharp right turn here pretty quick. <laughs> so, so, amen. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts. That's talking about revelation as well as, you know, the, the, the original let there be. Light to shine out of darkness, because we have been delivered from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, into the kingdom of his dear son. Has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Praise the Lord. In us is the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. Amen. Who put it there? He did. Praise the Lord. In us is the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. And he's the one that put it there. It's a treasure that we carry in fragile jars of clay. Another place he calls it earthen vessels, our physical bodies. We are walking, talking treasure chests. We are walking, talking arcs of the covenant. Yeah. Woo! Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Walking, talking glory. If that doesn't elevate your, uh, you know, self-worth, Something's wrong, amen, with your thinking. Amen. That, and this isn't about us being arrogant. It's about us recognizing who we are so that, see, God gets the glory because it's him that's in us. It's him that's doing it. But we get to participate. We get to be glory carriers. Hallelujah. Look at Psalms 19, verse 1. But, man, we've got to tell ourselves this. We've got to remind ourselves of this because this world, this sense realm that we live in, is all about dragging us down to the lowest common denominator, which is doubt, fear, and unbelief. Or everything based on me. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiworks. That's why angels look into this. They're still saying the temple is filled Holy, holy, holy. The temple is filled with the glory of God. Yes. They're, they're declaring. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. Can you see why the devil wants you to keep you blinded to this reality? Because if you find out if you really begin to understand it, you've got, you've got him whipped. Amen. He's got to keep you blind to this reality. He's got to keep you in the flesh to manipulate and to control you and to keep you in fear and doubt and all that kind of stuff. Amen. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. God didn't create us to do nothing. He created us to show the world what he's like. We have to be aware of our identity to do that. Now, how did God do that? Look at John chapter 1 and verses 1 through 5. So how did God reveal himself? In a man. Right? In Jesus. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. God is beginning to show Himself. He's revealing Himself through words. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. Nothing was made without words. Everything that exists, exists because of words. That's how God operates. That's how God works. In the beginning, right? So in him was life, and the life was the light of men. We have already talked about that. We've got the light. We are the light. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. 
Praise the Lord. So knowledge was given and knowledge was rejected. Not unlike what happened in the garden. All right, John chapter 1, verses 12 through 14. John 1, 12 through 14. But as many as received him, here's the caveat. A bunch rejected him, right? The light came and they, didn't re they rejected the light. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. That'd be us. Everybody say amen. amen. Even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. How was Jesus born? By the will of God, not by human flesh. Praise the Lord. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. We're to do the same thing. We're to reveal the glory. Praise the Lord. All right. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. Here's the right-hand turn I was telling you about. No signal. I'm just going. Praise the Lord. Look out, Alvin. It's going to happen again. <laughs> Somebody's cutting you off. Praise the Lord. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. What have we been talking about? The knowledge came, they rejected the knowledge. Right? right? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people, not strangers, not aliens, not people that are not connected. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject you, that thou shalt be no priest to me. What have we been talking about? We are kings and priests. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, or the word of God, I will also forget the children. Now, that sounds like God's being mean, but the truth is God can only operate one way, and that's by words. Yes. That's why he said the rain and the snow comes down, waters the ground, produces, amen, but it has to come back. Right. Somebody has to say what he says yes. for it to do what it was sent to do. If they do, it will not come back to him void. Praise the Lord. All right, Luke chapter 6 and verse 39. And he spake a parable unto them, can the blind lead the blind? That's a rhetorical question. <laughs> Shall they not both fall in the ditch? I submit that most of the church has been the blind leading the blind. And we're all in the ditch, praise the Lord. Or most are. And if we're not today, we will be tomorrow, and then we'll climb out of the ditch, and we'll be back in the ditch on the other side. Because we just keep losing yes. our identity right. and functioning as something that is not. Right. Praise the Lord. The Word of God is knowledge. Mm. Jesus always revealed knowledge, and He did it in a unique way. And He referred to natural things in a way that revealed spiritual truth. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. We have this spiritual reality in a physical-looking thing. Praise the Lord. Look at Romans chapter 1 and verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. Now think about the invisible things. Everything that was created was invisible right. until he spoke it. Right. Amen? From the creation of the world all the way back to the beginning. But they're clearly seen now. Why? Because he spoke them into existence. Mm -hmm. Being understood by the things that are made. So we understand the spirit realm by the things that, we're, that we see, right? We understand how it works because we see the evidence of how that worked. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. People are without excuse because if you know anything about the scripture, you know that all of this existed in the mind of God. Right. He spoke it and it became. Amen. That's how God works. And Paul says the truth of God's word can be understood by the natural process of the earth's production. In other words, how the earth works you can understand how God works. All right, Mark chapter 4, verse 3. You're going to say, oh, here we go again. But I'm trying to show you the connection 
between these. These are not random things. They're all part of what God is trying to show us. From the very beginning, from the very first thing that is, is written down, that is recorded of, of God. Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. All right, drop to verse 11 through 14 now. Same chapter, verse 11 through 14. Now, again, this is showing, God is saying, all I can show you my reality, I can show you the spirit dimension, and I can do it through the natural realm. This is what Jesus was doing all the time. He said unto them, Unto you is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things done in parables. Remember I talked about that just briefly Sunday? That seeing they may see and not perceive. Why? Because if you grasp one, you grasp them both. You can't get the spiritual reality without the physical manifestation. And if you get the physical manifestation, it connects you to the spirit. Okay? So for those of you that weren't here, if you've forgotten... The, just for example, we'll say healing. You get healed. Now, you've already got all the reports. You know it's impossible for you to get healed. you got a you know, uh, terminal thing. All right? But people have prayed. You've prayed. And all of a sudden, bang, the doctors come in and say, hey, I don't know what to tell you, but you know you, you don't have that. Yeah. Now, you, you grasp the physical thing immediately. I've been healed. I've been healed. But at the same time, you're connected to the spirit realm because you know this isn't natural. This isn't something that, you know, all of a sudden, wow, that reveals that. The obverse of that is, okay, you're praying and praying and praying for an outcome and you're believing that God has promised this for you and then that happens. They're like one thing. You, you see, you don't understand, what I'm, am I making any sense? They're connected. You can't grasp the one without grasping the other. Praise the Lord. And that's what we're talking about here. So he doesn't want them understanding how things work because they'll try to manipulate the system. Okay? And so, so that seeing they may see and not perceive and hearing they may hear and not understand lest at any time they should be converted and their shin, sins should be forgiven them. Remember back what we were talking about before, if I go all the way back to uh, uh, Psalms, he's talking about idols. He's given us all this stuff, but he doesn't want us dealing with idols, false gods. Mm -hmm. That's partly what this is talking about as well, because we have a tendency to elevate people who are no different than we are. And he wants this to be about him in us, not about him and in that guy. Because the glory can't fill the earth if it's only in that guy or ten guys or ten women and ten guys. You know what I'm saying? It has to be in all of us. All of us have to be aware of this and operating in it, operating in it in order for it to function the, the way God intended it to function, Okay. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable, and how then will you know all parables? In other words, if you understand this parable, you're going to understand all of it. You'll understand the way that I'm teaching, okay? The sower soweth the word. He said earlier in the beginning, he said, a sower went out to sow. So I'm telling you this natural story, but there's a spiritual reality here that is greater even than the natural. But they connect. They make sense. They, they, they interact. Amen? They're parallels in a sense. And here, so he explains it. He said, the sower that I told you about is sowing the word. Praise the Lord. All right, let's look at, again, Matthew chapter 13 and verse 3 this time. Matthew 13, 3. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. All right, now drop down to verse 11 through 19. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. This is a mystery of the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. It's how it works. But to them it's not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken even away, even that he has. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing... See not, 
Because they see this natural thing that I'm teaching, but they cannot see the spiritual reality of it. And hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. Now, that's important, okay? And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which said, By hearing you shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear, and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then immediately comes the wicked one and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. All right, praise the Lord. So Jesus reveals that when you plant the seed of God's word, the heart becomes the soil. Amen? It becomes the soil, and that is what produces the harvest. Now, we, we, you can argue what the heart is, but it's the innermost reality of who you are. Say subconscious, the real intellect connected with your spirit. It's not your spirit alone, because your spirit has to operate through, amen, your soul and your body. That's why you've got to have your mind renewed to these things, praise the Lord. Because your spirit's already, it's righteous, it's right, it's got it all together. Right. But in order for that to manifest in any natural way, manifest in the way that it, that it can be observed, you have to get in tune with it. Amen. That's the renewing of your mind. That's how you're going to be able to see in the natural and see what the natural is trying to show us about the spirit. Amen? The laws of the spirit realm are extended into this natural realm. Praise the, say praise the Lord, because here's the deal. Every, God looked Moses looked up into the spirit realm. We say heaven, but all he was seeing was in the spirit. Right. He didn't see a village with gold streets and all that. He, he saw into the spirit. Called it heaven. I talked about it a little bit last week, which is just another way of saying the presence of God, where God is. He could see, he could see that. And what did he see? He saw a tabernacle. And God said, now make that one on earth just like this one. And he gave him all the dimensions and all of that. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. We, we, are, we are in that dimension. We, are, we have that potential, amen, to see the Spirit come to this world and see the parallels between the natural and the supernatural because these are fixed laws in the spirit realm. They're fixed laws just like we have gravity, just like we have all the, you know, the natural laws uh, of aerodynamics, you know, even lift and all of those things, uh, gravity, you know, just the natural laws, there are fixed laws in heaven. Right. And what happens is when we believe those things and when we confess those things, we can, we can supersede the natural law. Yes. You can speed up time so that a healing, you, you, he says, we lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Sometimes it's instantaneous. All you did was speed up time. The healing was in process. It's just a question of moving it forward. Yes, Lord. All right? Sometimes it just, it's a gradual thing. You see what I'm saying? But this is about focusing on these realities. So the fixed laws of God's word are revealed in these natural processes of planting a seed in the soil and then reaping a harvest. There's a law. The natural law is you plant a seed in, the, in decent ground, water it, it gets light, and it will produce a harvest yep. after its kind. Yep. That is a spiritual, that is a fixed spiritual law that he's showing us in the natural. Yes, Lord. The fixed spiritual law is that when you sow the word, amen, you're going to get a harvest. Yes. Praise the Lord. The laws of process in the natural world are basically the same as those in the spirit world that created it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Actually, and that's what's called operating in your status or the status of the kingdom. The kingdom is a status. I talked about it Sunday. It's not a place. It has no boundaries. has no depth or, or distance or, or any of that. It's a status. It's a reality of who we are. Praise the Lord. So John chapter 15, verses 1 through 3. So this isn't name it and claim it. This is a law of the Spirit. Just like you can't go out here and jump off the roof of this building and think you're not going to fall down. You're not going to fall up because there is a law called gravity. Amen? And you better have some real faith before you start leaping off of buildings thinking you're going up instead of down. Well, the, there are laws that are fixed in the kingdom, laws that are fixed in the spirit realm that are just, if actually they're more real and more demanding, amen, than the natural laws here on earth. And that's the thing he's trying to show us here through the natural is there is a spiritual truth that's greater than this. Yes. So I'm giving you something. That's what he's saying. I'm giving you something you can relate to yeah. so that you will see the necessity of doing things by the law, Lord. these fixed laws. Because I'm the true vine. My father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he taketh away. Every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean... And this is important. This is what we're looking at here. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Okay, verse 3 reveals that his word is a type of water. That spiritual water cleanses you. Amen? That's why we have water baptism. It doesn't cleanse you. The Bible even tells us it doesn't cleanse us. It's a type. It's a physical thing trying to show us something that is spiritual. And then we get all ticked off and freaked out if everybody isn't baptized or something. When it, it, you know, it's okay. we want, we, we're, we're not in disagreement with baptism, but the point is if you don't get the, the real picture of what that's about, then all you're doing is just going through motions. I mean, you're just, you're just doing physical stuff that has no real impact. It's there for a reason, just like everything else is there. Amen? Okay, so Mark chapter 4, verse 14 says, He said, the sower soweth the word, right? Yes. God's word, already told us, we've read it before, is seed from which a harvest is produced. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. All right, the word will also cleanse and refresh you the same way water does if you're thirsty or tired or dirty or worn out or whatever, right? Yeah. Take a shower and just open your mouth and it helps, right? All right, Psalms 119 and verse 130. Psalms 119, 130. Stay with me because we're the glory, see, and we're trying to figure out how. <coughs> There's laws for this. There's a way. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. Thank God for that. Praise the Lord. Understanding to the simple. Praise God. Okay, all you gardeners out here. I, I, I'm not a gardener. I dig holes. Praise the Lord. And I don't dare pull weeds until everything is in bloom. Because the only way I know if it's a weed or not is if, if it has a bloom on it, it wasn't a weed. Praise God. But all you gardeners know that you have to have four basic things, right? You've got to have seed. You've got to have water. You've got to have light. And you've got to have soil. Okay? If you're going to get a harvest, all four of those things have to be involved. A seed that sprouts and comes up will die if it doesn't get light. Right? And a seed can't survive planting without sufficient water and light. That's the natural. It's a law. Try to do it without it and see what happens. Okay, what is he doing? He's trying to show us a fixed spiritual law. 
John 15, verse 3. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Okay? The word will clean out the weeds that choke the seed. All right? The word prepares the soil of the heart so that it can produce. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 24 through 26. People think, well, that's just mumbo jumbo. You're just you're just denying reality. No, I'm speaking a a, a reality that is far greater than the one that you think I'm just denying. Right. And this is biblical. It is spiritual. And if we don't do it, you can't wait until you're getting run over by a semi to start declaring that the protection, you know, of the Lord is is upon me in my house. It's, it's a little late then to start believing in a law, Amen, that you haven't obeyed. So therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be to their husbands and everything. This is not about husbands and wives. I mean, it's not a wrong thing, but it's about us and God. He's just trying to give us, again, an earthly reality that we can relate to spiritually. And we make it all about the earth and forget about what it is he's really trying to teach us. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church, gave himself forth that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. Right. Praise the Lord. So that washing with the word, what? It purifies the soil. Purifies the heart. And it provides water, which then forces the seed to germinate. Praise God. Isaiah 41, verses 17 and 18. See, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not much of a gardener here, but I'm expected to have quite a, quite a plantation in glory. <laughs> Amen. I'm expecting some real bumper crops. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When the poor and the needy seek water and there is none, their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers. Mike was talking about this earlier. I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys, and I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Feeling a little dry? Just believe God. Amen. He wants to pour out living water. Amen. So that you can produce beyond your imagination. Amen. The crops, the harvest that God has purposed for your particular life. Yes. Amen. With the poor and the needy. See? I will open rivers in high places, fountains in the midst of the valleys. I'll make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's possible. Now, here's the point of this. It's possible, and, and, and we all experienced it. So don't get depressed and bummed out about this. Just think it through to the end of the, the, the conclusion, the natural conclusion. You'll see the, the, the result of the spiritual conclusion. Amen? So it's possible to have the word and still not have enough understanding to put it to work for you. Amen? Hey, we've had the Word of God for a long time, most of us here. But have we had an understanding? You see what I'm saying? Of how we could really put it to work. All right, John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. John 8, 31 and 32. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Lord. Notice it's not truth alone that sets you free, but it's the knowledge of that truth, yes. understanding the truth that sets you free to then be able to act on that truth. Well, let me just give you another one. Faith is nothing more than you acting on the Word of God. Right. Praise the Lord. Yes. Peter had great faith when he got out of the boat, and then he lost his faith because he, quit, he, he did what? He quit looking at the Word. Yes. 
As long as he looked at the word and obeyed what the word said was come, he was cool with it. He was, he was keeping spiritual laws that superseded the natural law of gravity. But he looked away and started looking at the natural, giving it priority. The laws come right back into effect. The laws begin to take effect again. Amen. So to whom you defer, to them have power. That's true in the natural and in the supernatural. If you give power to the natural laws, they'll dominate you. If you give power to the spiritual laws, they will dominate the natural laws. Praise the Lord. All right. Uh, Isaiah 55, verses 10 and 11. So it's not the truth. It's the truth that you have knowledge about that you can actually act on that produces. For as the rain comes down, we talked about this earlier briefly, the rain comes down, the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud. Look at this. It waters the earth and makes it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be. There's the natural. Here is the spirit. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Praise the Lord. Notice, it's the water that makes it bring forth and bud. The water of the word forces the seed to produce. So it's not enough to just say the word. Now you've got to water it. The word is seed, but it's also water for the seed. So you can, have un- you can have knowledge of the word, but not have understanding. So you have to keep sowing the water of the word. You have to keep watering that seed in order for the truth to set you free. Praise God. All right. Matthew 21 and 21. Can you see that it's important that we don't just read the word, but that's what we're talking. That's what we're saying. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. I only say what I hear my Father say. That's why he got the results that he got. That's why the, the, the spirit realm dominated the natural realm in his life. He kept sowing the seed, and he kept watering the seed, and he forced it to produce. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If you have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it will be done. Now that's a strange statement. How could you have faith and doubt at the same time? I mean, it bothers me. I don't know if it does anybody else, but if you have faith and doubt not, it seems Redundant. Why would you even say that? Because apparently it's possible to have faith and doubt operating at the same time. And most of us probably have experienced it. Only we just assume that it's because I don't have faith that I've got doubt. The truth is you have faith or you wouldn't be saying what you're saying in the first place, right? But there's also doubt there at the same time, all right? Look at Mark chapter 1, verse 40 and 42. And I'll, give you, I'll just show you an example here of what Jesus is talking about. So there came a leper to Jesus, beseeching him and kneeling down to him and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him. Can you go back to verse 41? Because I don't think I read it. 41. Prior to this, it's just where Jesus Jesus said, I will. He said, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will. Not only can I, but I will. And as soon as Jesus said that, immediately the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed. So here what you've got is the leper had the seed you can You're powerful enough to do this. So he had some seed, right? He had some word. But he didn't have enough water of understanding to germinate that seed. Right? 
So he's got faith and he's got doubt at the same time. The seed of you can needed to be watered so that he would. Am I making sense? Praise the Lord. So Jesus waters dry spot by saying, I will. And immediately, Jesus didn't do anything else. He just watered the dry area. And immediately, the leper was healed. Why? Because the word got watered. It germinated. It produced a harvest. When Jesus removed the question mark, the leper's faith was released. And healing resulted in a harvest. The leper had faith that Jesus could. But until he had understanding that Jesus would, there was no manifestation. So how do you do that? You have a word. You know God heals. You know God prospers. You know God delivers. But will he for me? See what I'm saying? Because we've got all kinds of crap that we lived with and that we grew up with that is telling us a whole other story, a natural story. And that's why you have to keep watering that seed with the word. Get the love of God. Understand the love that God has for you. Understand his graciousness towards you. Keep watering that word. And it'll force that seed to produce. It'll water the dry spots in us that have these questions, that have these doubts, that have these, even though we have faith. Because if we didn't have faith, we wouldn't be reading this. We wouldn't be here tonight. We wouldn't be praying. We wouldn't be asked. We wouldn't be any of that. So it isn't a question of having faith. It's a question of having enough understanding of that faith for it to produce. And that's why we need to be watered with the word on a continuous basis. That's why, you know, you put up the little stick of notes. You, you confess. You you put them on your refrigerator. You put them on the dashboard of your car. You put wherever you got to have just so that you're constantly watering that word so that it will be forced to germinate. Praise the Lord. So whatever you're believing for, don't give up. Just what Toby said. We've got to confess those promises. We've got to confess those, those visions and those uh, words of knowledge that people had about the church. We need to water the words that God has spoken through people. Yes. And we continue to water the seed with more word until it saturates that dry area and produces a harvest. Yes. What is that? The glory of God revealed. The glory that's in you. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. The treasure that's in you. The treasure, a harvest so vast, you haven't even been able to imagine what it might even consist of. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise Give the Lord a hand tonight. Praise God. You want to be spiritual? That is spiritual. That is operating in the spirit. That's walking in the kingdom. That's operating by the kingdom principles. Those laws work. They are established, fixed laws. And when you begin to see them that way, you'll begin, look, we don't do stupid stuff like take off on an airplane with no gas in it. We don't jump off of buildings unless we're out of our minds. Right? Why? Because we understand some basic laws. Yeah. You can't do that and get away with it. But if you obey those laws, you can work with those laws and be blessed by them. Spirit realm is exactly that way. That's why we have these parables is so that we can, not so that we can say, oh, what a cool story. No, he's trying to show us how the kingdom of God operates, how the spirit realm functions. And that needs to be our focus so that we can have everything that God has promised us Amen. so that God receives all the glory and the earth is filled with it. People cannot deny it. Right. Amen. Amen. God bless you all for being here tonight. Amen. Go. Stay focused. Keep the laws. Amen. And it'll set you free. Hallelujah. God bless all of you. Appreciate you being here. Hope we'll see you back here Sunday. Have a good rest of your week. And Friday night. And Friday night I'm sorry. Come Friday night.
Come Friday and water the word, praise the Lord.